Okay, hello everyone. My name is Abdullah Asad, I'm a medical student at King Saud bin Abdelaziz University for Health Sciences. And today we're going to talk about embryology, specifically the development of the reproductive system. Now, this has been requested by many students, so without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we want to talk about is the gonads. Okay, so what's going to happen over there? So, primordial germ cells migrate to the gonadal ridge. As you can see here, the red dots over here are the primordial germ cells. Okay, they're going to to migrate through the vitelline duct and into the gonadal ridge, which is, you can see, at number 10, the green part over here. That's the gonadal ridge. Now, in the gonadal ridge, you're going to find three kinds of cells, okay? Primordial germ cells, which just migrated. What are these going to give us? These are going to give us the future gametes, so spermatogonia and the ogonia in females. The, the, the mesothelial cells over here are going to give us the structures that are going to harbor and help in the development of the primordial germ cells. So in males, it's going to give us what? Seminiferous tubules, okay? And in females, it's going to give us the follicles, the ovarian follicles. Last kind of cells is the mesenchymal cells. These are supporting cells. Remember the word support. So in males, it's going to give us Leydig cells, okay? And in females, it's going to give us what? Ovarian support stroma. Now, the genital ducts. Now, before we get started with the genital ducts, I just want to make a statement, and I want you to read this, uh, memorize this really well. The, the whole genital tract, urogenital tract, are made of which layer? Ectoderm, endoderm, mesoderm? The right answer is intermediate mesoderm. A lot of doctors like to ask that. They go back to the basics. Where, does all, where do all these structures come from? Intermediate mesoderm. Okay, now, talking about the genital ducts. Now, let's get, let's get into details. Genital ducts, we have two ducts. We have the mesonephric duct over here and the paramesonephric duct. They're also known as the Wolfian duct and the Mullerian duct. I suggest you memorize both names because most exams put the mesonephric and paramesonephric. Although, I like to memorize the Wolfian and Mullerian. Why? Because Wolfian is associated with the male genital tract. Uh, genital tract. So, wolf, wolf and male, you can associate. Mullerian is associated with female genital tract. Now, what do these ducts give us, or these tubes? What do they give us? They give us the internal genital structures. So in males, the Wolfian will give us epididymis, vas deferens, and seminal vesicles. And malarian is going to give us, in females, uterus, fallopian tubes, and cervix, and the upper one-third of vagina. Okay? Now, how do we get male? How do we get female? What happens? We can't have both tubes. One of them has to go, and one of them has to stay. Okay? So... In situations where there is no hormonal input, no hormonal input, okay, what's going to happen? Well, what's going to happen is the malarian is going to survive, okay, and stay alive. It's going to give us the uterus, fallopian tubes, cervix, upper one-third of vagina, and the wolfian duct is going to regress or die. No more epididymis, no more vas deferens, and no more seminal vesicles. This is what, this what happens in normal physiology in females. So in females, there, there's not going to be any hormonal input. This is what's going to happen. Okay? That's in females. So what about males? What's going to happen in males? Well, in males, in genetics, they define male by having the Y chromosome. Okay? For example, Klinefelter patients, they're going to have uh, genetic chromosomes of X, X, Y. Since there's Y, they put it, they put, they categorize them as males. Okay? Why? Because the X, Y chromosome or the Y chromosome, has a region called the sex-determining region, the SRY. Okay? This is going to encode many kinds of uh, hormones and whatnot, and will result in, after many kinds of sequences, into giving us Leydig cells and Sertoli cells. Okay? Sertoli cells are going to give us MIF, which is short for malarian inhibiting factor. Leydig cells is going to give us testosterone and dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone doesn't come directly from Leydig cells, but mostly from testosterone. T uh, or testosterone is converted to dihydrotestosterone. Di dihydrotestosterone does not come directly from Leydig cells. Okay? Put that in mind. Now, genital ducts. This is what's going to happen in males. So, we have Sertoli cells gave us the MIF, right? Malarian inhibiting factor. So, what's it going to do? It's going to inhibit the malarian duct, so no more uterus, no more fallopian tubes, no more cervix, and no more upper one-third of vagina. What about testosterone? Now, usually we said if there's no hormonal input, wolfian duct will die. But since we have testosterone, it's going to go there and, hey man, stay with me, keep it alive. Wolfian duct will, will stay alive and will give us epididymis, vas deferens, and seminal vesicles. 
Okay. Now we talked about MIF, we talked about testosterone. What about dihydrotestosterone? What does that do? That is responsible for the external genitalia. Well, mostly external genitalia. So it's going to give us the prostate, the penis, and the scrotum. Okay. PPS for short. Now, if there is no dihydrotestosterone, no hormonal input, what are we going to have externally? We're going to have labia majora, labia minora, a female, female genitals externally. Okay. Now, let's go a little bit clinical and talk about uh, something that doctors a lot, of, a lot of times they brag about, okay? Which is sometimes in patients, they're not, the testosterone, they are going to be XY, okay? But their testosterone is not functioning right. Either it's not coming out of the Leydig cells or the receptors are not, re are not responding to the testosterone, something like that. So the testosterone effect is gone, okay? So the testosterone is not working. What's going to happen to the Wolfian duct? It's going to die. So no more epididymis, no more vas deferens, and no more seminal vesicles. Okay? And of course, dihydrotestosterone comes from testosterone. We said that before. So since testosterone is not going to work, dihydrotestosterone is not going to work. So, not, so no more prostate, no more penis, and no more scrotum. We're going to have labia majora, labia minora, and whatnot. However, the MIF comes from Sertoli cells. Okay? So this function over here, it's going to be all right. Nothing's wrong with that, okay? So malarian, uh, malarian duct or the paramusinific duct is going to regress, okay? So no more uterus, no more, tu no more fallopian tubes, no more cervix, and no more, no more upper one-third of vagina. So how would this patient present? Usually we present with female external genitalia, normal, but we'll come and say, what? Primary am amenorrhea, okay? She's not having menarche, okay? So... After tests, you're going to find, after scans and, and, and tests like that, you're going to find what? No, she, she doesn't have uterus, no fallopian tubes, no cervix, no upper one-third of vagina, okay? And you're going to find, in, well, maybe in the abdomen, you're going to find testes, which uh, say that she, will, you, she, her chromosomes are XY, however, the testosterone wasn't working, okay? Now... Uh, the, uh, the testes, I'm not sure if you find them in the abdomen or where, in, where exactly in the body, so, but that's not, that's not really important. The important part is that testosterone function is not working well, either from the receptors or from Leydig cells or from whatnot, okay? Here is the pic here's a picture of indifferentiated genital tract. So we don't know if this is male or female. We still don't know. Here over here, what you see in number six, this is indifferent gonads. It can either be testes or it can be, either be ovaries. We don't know. The blue tubes over here, the blue ducts, are the malarian ducts. The pink tubes are the Wolfian ducts, okay? What you see here, number eight, this is the urogenital sinus, okay? This is very important. We'll talk about that later. What you see in the brown, here the brown two long lines, is the gabernaculum. We're going to talk about what the gabernaculum gives us later. And over here in number nine, over here, is the labioscrotal swellings, okay? Labioscrotal swelling, okay? Over here, the gabernaculum will help us and it will give us also many structures. We're going to talk about uh, for each male and female, it will give us different structures. Gabernaculum is number seven, okay? Let's talk about males, okay? As we said in males, what? The malarian duct is going to regress. The malarian duct is going to die because we have MIF. It's going to kill it. And... The, the, the Wolfian duct will give us what? Will give us the epididymis, as you can see here, the outer part over here, the epididymis, the vas deferens, and the seminal vesicles, okay? As you can see over here, okay? Here now, the indifferentiated gonads will become what? Testes. Now, because since, we're, since male, we're going to talk, uh, now it became testes. What about the gabernaculum? What does it do in males? Well, the testes are developed, we all know that the testes develop in the abdomen, but it has to migrate down to the scrotum. That's where the gabernaculum comes in and says, hey, hey, let me help you out. Let me show you where, the, where you have to go. Let me show you the way, okay? So it helps in the migration of the testes, okay? Now, the urogenital signs, as you see here, what is that going to give us? That's going to give us the urinary bladder, okay? It's going to give us also the urethra, okay? The prostate gland and the bulbourethral gland. Okay, that's in males. Now, just to draw a picture, and you can just imagine how, how it will be after migration. Now, here we have the seminal vesicles over here. 
with the uh, semi vesicles over here with uh, they're going to be attached to the vas deferens now the vas deferens are going to follow the epididymis which which is stuck to the testes which just migrated downwards so it's going to go where it's going to go up and down follow it down now this reminds us of the real the, the normal anatomy of the male okay now let's talk about females now in females what you see here is the undifferentiated picture after that, what's going to happen? We said in females, there is no hormonal input. So, with no hormonal input, the malarian duct will start to get closer to each other. Okay? Closer, and even more closer, until it, until it gives us some structures. What are the structures we said? The uterus, fallopian tubes, the cervix, and upper one-third of the vagina. Okay? The wolfian duct, we said it's going to regress. It's going to die. Okay? As you see here. Okay, what about the gabernaculum? The gabernaculum is going to give us two important structures or two important ligaments. Okay, the first ligament will be attached to the ovaries. So here it was the indifferentiated gonads, but now it became ovaries. So the ligament attached to that will be the ovarian ligament. And the gabernaculum is also going to give us the round ligament. Okay, so those two structures. Now, what about the urogenital sinus? The urogenital sinus. We said in males it gives us the urinary bladder, the urethra, the prostate gland, and the bulbal urethra gland. What about in females? Well, there's some things in common and some things are different. For example, it also gives us a urinary bladder and the urethra. However, in the females it gives us a lower third of vagina, urethral and parurethral glands, and the greater vestibular glands. Okay? That, uh, those structures and the urinar urinary bladder and the urethra. Okay, now one thing, one note we want, I want to talk about before we jump to the other slide, which is, in some books you would, see, you would see that the Wolfian duct or the mesoniferic duct will give us structures that's related to the kidneys. For example, it's going to give, it's going to give us uh, the ureters, the renal pelvis, the calluses, and the collecting tubules in both males and females, okay? But that's starting to get confusing. That doesn't make sense because we said in females the Wolfian duct dies. What's going on? Well, basically, in males and females, over here, down here, it's, starting, it's going to start to give a little mass, a little piece of tissue called the ureteric bud. This ureteric bud will then grow and become the ureter, the renal pelvis, the calluses, and the collecting tubules, okay? So this ureteric bud will happen or will grow before the, the Wolfian duct will, will regress in females. Okay, and of course it will uh, it will happen in males because uh, Wolfian duct doesn't regress then. So now that we talked about internal structures, now let's talk about external genitalia. Now what you see here in number two over here is what we call the the labioscrotal swelling. Okay, now from its name you can tell what it's going to give us labioscrotal. So either labia labia majora or the scrotum in males. Okay, now. Number four here is what we call what? The urogenital folds, okay? And number six inside is, is the opening of the urogenital sinus, okay? So here, the, number four, the urogenital folds, what is, what is this going to give us? It's either going to give us the labia minora in females, or it's going to fuse and give us what? The ventral part of the, the penis and most of the penile urethra and whatnot, okay? Number three is what we call the genital tubercle. Now, the genital tubercle, I want you to associate it with the word glands, but because it's going to either give us the glands penis in males or the glands clitoris in females. Let's see here. here we have it in colors. So, let's start with the easy, easy parts, labioscrotal swelling, which we see here in purple. Okay, it's either going to give us the scrotum or the labia majora. Okay, the, the urethral folds are urogenital folds. What are they going to give us? They're going to give us either the labia minora, or they're going to get the, they're going to fuse and give us what the ventral aspect of the penis and most of the urethra. Okay, the the genital tubercle is we said associated with the word glands, so either glands penis and or glands clitoris. Okay, there, there are other structures, but I'm just I'm just stating the most important ones. That being said. Here I left some of tables to show you which structure uh, gives out which structure. So here we have the urogenital sinus, the mesonephric duct and tubules, and the paramesonephric duct. You can just pause the video so you can uh, memorize what's on these tables. This is the other, the continuing part of the table. We have the genital tubercle, the urogenital folds, the labioscrotal uh, scroll folds. These are the, actually the external genitalia mostly. Here are the references that I used for this video. 
first aid for the basic science organ systems. I highly recommend uh, highly recommend to read from this book. It gives all, uh, especially, especially when you, if you have problem with the embryology of the genital tract. Most of the uh, most of the information in the slides came from uh, used from this book, and of course Kaplan USMLE Step One Physiology book. I don't know physiology, embryology, what does that have to do with it? But they talk a little bit about how the, how we have the ducts and how they differentiate in uh, in our in our bodies. If you have any questions or comments, here are here are the ways to reach me. Thank you very much for uh, for listening and goodbye.